Welcome back, Canaanites. I had a different video planned for today, but with the SDCC panel being released late Tuesday night, I felt a breakdown of relevant information was a valid excuse to push the other video back just a bit. So let's see what we can see. The panel was hosted by 343's Frank O'Connor, Dan Ayub, and Kevin Grace, Halo newcomer and the voice slash face of the AI Isabel, Erica Soto, and Blur creative director, Dave Wilson. Mr. Wilson was also the VFX supervisor for the Halo Wars 1 cinematics. The panel was moderated by 343's Kiki Wolfkill. In terms of canon material at least, much of the panel was either repeat info from the recent Halo Wars 2 videos I released, looking back at Halo Wars 1 and your standard panel vagueness, but there were a number of standout moments. The first was from Erica, who noted that while she had heard of Halo prior to being cast for Halo Wars 2, had never played the games. To prepare for her role, she watched a number of cinematics on YouTube and, in her own words, did a lot of research. It's always good to hear a new actor trying to immerse themselves in the universe. A little later on, Kiki brings up both Forge and Serena, something I know that people who have watched the panel pay particular attention to. Naturally, no direct answer was given, but Kevin Grace does note that 28 years does not bode well for Serena, and Cutter will have to deal with whatever has happened to her. I'm personally still betting she's gone, perhaps a video message or some basic program, such as waking up the crew when a UNSC signal is detected, being all that remain. Perhaps of greater interest was Dan Ayub's comment on Forge. It was an interesting Forge question. Um, no, there wasn't. I, 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 I heard him. The, oh, yeah, the you handsome know what? Forge. I'm, He's yeah. controversial. I'm just Bad gonna. I'm just gonna take this down for a second. So, Kevin, this guy, and I have a debate all the time as to whether or not Forge may have survived the end of Halo Wars One. Mm. Kevin is just a negative guy, and he's saying there's no way a human could survive a sun going supernova. I think there's always hope. <laughs> so this, this is no, no, no. This is an ongoing conversation that we're going to have to figure out. And by conversation, he means he he talks in the hallway, yeah. and, and we don't listen. And usually, I walk away. Cause yeah, unfortunately. Well, while this has made some nervous, others excited over the prospect of Forge returning, and indeed, Forge was originally going to return in the ensemble version of Halo Wars 2. The tone here was very much in jest, not something I think needs to be taken seriously. A bit after that one talking about the Ark, Frank O'Connor notes that 343 has plans for the Ark beyond Halo Wars 2. This is fantastic news for a couple of reasons. First, the Ark is more than just a forge and a refuge. This was hinted at in Halo 3 and continued to be hinted at under 343. Hell, for a time, it seemed very likely that the absolute record was on the Ark, and some of the imagery in the Halo Legends episode Origins 2 heavily hinted that the Ark would be important in the future. Second, though, is that if 343, for some reason, decides not to include Mendicant Blast in Halo Wars 2, there is hope for a future appearance beyond that. Still, 343, if you're not going to include MB as a major player in Halo Wars 2, at the very least, hint that he's there. Or confirm him to be dead. One or the other, please, you can't keep us hanging like this. Kiki Wolfkell also notes during the section that blind wolves will not be in Halo Wars 2. Makes one wonder if any sort of ambient life will be present. We've yet to see any. Later on, when talking about Atriox and the Banished, Kevin Grace notes that, while the Banished started prior to the Great Schism, they only quote-unquote went big after the Covenant fell. Still can't wait to hear the full story on that. The main panel ends with each panelist being asked to sum up the Halo Wars 2 story in a quick sentence. Uh, I would say, when the universe goes to hell, uh, what do you fight for? Um, well, it's bleak. Right. Um, Jesus, <laughs> Kevin, always and the bunnies. Yeah. Uh, I would, I'd say it's about family. I think it's a bunch of folks coming together who, uh, you know, spread a fire. It's been 30 years. People have moved on. Um, you know, with, with Isabel, she's got to find her. I think it's about finding family. She yeah. said one sentence. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave totally stole mine. Um, I mean, I think oh. it's definitely about family. You see that with the Isabel character. And you see some other motivations on the other side as well, right? And like, who do you care about and who do you fight for? That's a lot of sentences. <laughs> Dude, seriously? <laughs> I'm gonna. Kevin Grace's response was easily my favorite, along with his response to some of the other panelists. But really, it does reflect the state of the universe right now. Shit has gone to hell, both in universe and for many out of universe. Halo Wars 2 is, in many ways, a representation of what many hope is a return to classic Halo. Here's hoping for a fantastic story. Anyway, they then transitioned to the Q&A section. Many were about gameplay and whatnot, but here and there were some about the story. The first one of interest asked about the return of the Flood, to which Kevin Grace said, that would be interesting. 
When later asked about a Forerunner faction for multiplayer, after a long speech about Halo Wars 2 happening right after Halo 5, Kevin Grace basically gives the same answer again. So we may have Flood in Halo Wars 2, and Prometheans may enter the mix in multiplayer if nothing else. Another question asks about a Banished campaign. Kevin Grace confirms that the base game will focus entirely on the UNSC, but they do have plans to revisit Atriox later on. That could mean that the campaign DLC will be a Banished campaign. The final question asks whether the created storyline will play a part in Halo Wars 2. Frankie answers with your standard vague answer and a that would be interesting, so it could go either way. And that pretty much sums up all the big canon moments from the panel. However, there was a ton more content that I intentionally skipped, including some amazing behind the scenes video and discussion. There's a link on screen and in the description box for the full panel. So what did you guys think of the panel and the info revealed there? Good? Bad? Huh? Get those keyboards typing in the comments below, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.